Congressman John Patrick Maloney stunned some voters when he decided to switch districts. Was it a bold move, or will challenger Mike Lawler make him wish he didn't? The point starts right now. It's a race to represent Hudson Valley voters. Up first, Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney. I want to start right now with talking about the, the issues with migrants coming into the country. The Department of Homeland Security has taken its first steps to close the border, limiting the number of Venezuelans that can come into the country to 24,000. Good idea, bad idea, does more need to be done? Well, I think what the administration is doing is establishing a process parallel to the one for Ukrainian refugees um, that prioritizes entry by air so that illegal border crossings are still uh, not permitted under the existing what's called Title 42 policy. But, here, but the big point is that we need to support our asylum laws. We need to give refuge to people seeking political asylum the way we always have, especially from countries like Venezuela and Cuba that have uh, political persecution. But is 24,000, a limit of 24,000, too little, given the fact that, like, in September alone, 33,000 Venezuelans tried to cross the border from Mexico into the United States? Right. Well, as you may know, I serve on the House Intelligence Committee, I've been to the region. I understand it's a very desperate situation. It is. It is because of the repression of uh, the dictator uh, Maduro in Venezuela. Um, what we need to do is partner with our regional allies and others um, to make sure that those seeking asylum can can receive it. Um, Mexico needs to be our partner in this, but that's not the same thing as allowing illegal border crossings, which are dangerous and, and should not be encouraged or, per or permitted. And I think that's the point that the administration is trying to make. The numbers should be large enough to, to address um, you know, our share of, of that need. We should do our part. But should be more should more be done at the border to close it down. Look, the the situation at the border is one where, because of the pandemic, you have had essentially a closed border under Title 42. Um, that has created an enormous backlog of people who would normally be able to claim asylum. So you're going to have to work through that backlog. But but my view is that it doesn't serve anybody's interest to have chaos uh, or to have mayhem at the border. So it needs to be done in an orderly uh, uh, process that allows us to work through that backlog. Again, working with our regional partners, that's the key. We're not the only one in this equation. But are you going to call on the president to do more? And will you call on the president to stop the flights that have been going into Westchester Airport and Stewart Airport in the area where you represent? Well, I, I think those things are in contradiction. As I understand it, um, uh, what happens is sponsors agree uh, to look out for people who are awaiting legal process, and that happens at areas around the country. Uh, and there's nothing secret about those movements. That's in contrast, by the way, to that stunt that Governor DeSantis did, where he put a bunch of poor people on a plane, lied to them, sent them to Martha's Vineyard. The point is, is that we want people to come back for a court date. To do that, we place them with sponsoring organizations that can assure that they do, and those are not all in one place. Uh, I think that's at the heart of what you're talking about. So that's a very different issue thing? than... Are the than, flights an, a good thing to get people to come not to New York City, but to places in your district? I think the border is, is a mess, and we need to have a comprehensive fix for it. That's why I've supported one for years. So you're seeing symptoms of that problem, and, and an effort by local authorities and others to do the right thing and to obey our laws uh, but but we need to fix the problem, which is why some of us have been pushing comprehensive solutions for a long time. So what would a comprehensive solution be? Well, you start with the people who are here who have a path to citizenship, can get in the back of the line, do it in a fair way. Uh, that would include dreamers right off the bat, um, but also farm workers, which is a bipartisan proposal and, and desperately needed, and also people with temporary protected status. That's five million people right off the bat um, that would be productive members of our society. We need to grow our workforce right now. We've got 11 million jobs open in this country. That's one of the reasons uh, inflation is, is, is what it is. And so the fact is, is that this is good for everybody, and that's where you could start. Uh, but there's more we need to do, particularly around legal points of entry. We can increase those, more screening, more technology, more personnel, because that's where the fentanyl and the other illegal drug traffic occurs, is at those legal points of entry where we need much better screening and technology. But, you know, you raise the issue of people coming here to work. So my question to you is, should the migrants be given immediate access 
process to work permits and not have to wait five or six months. Well, what should happen is they should get a much faster process so that their claims are adjudicated so they aren't left stranded here for years and years with no way to support themselves. So what I support is speeding up that process so that you have uh, a fair adjudication of an asylum claim, but it shouldn't take it shouldn't take years. Somebody shouldn't have to start a career to wait for that court date. So you know, when I went to your district uh, yesterday, I talked to people in your district, and they talk about the fact that economic stress is one of their biggest concerns in this race. So I'm wondering what you think you can do on the federal level to relieve some of the economic stress. I mean, is it things like trying to get salt passed? Is it other things, new ideas? What's your solution? Well, look, I mean, it, let me tell you. I grew up in a family where if gas prices went up, the food budget went down. And by this time of the week, we'd be eating Chef RD, right? Because that budget was the budget. And that's what's going on with a lot of working families right now. So what are we doing? First, you get gas prices down. We released the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, 90 million barrels. That's brought the price down about a buck uh, 30 a gallon. Yeah, Good but what, start. now that Saudi Arabia is, is decreasing the that's price, right. the, the, the production, it's going to go up again. Well, you know, let's see. I think the fact is, is that we can increase supplies, continue to release those reserves and we can absolutely go after the big oil companies for gouging but you know what we also did is we capped seniors out of pocket costs in medicare that's a big deal if you're on medicare two thousand dollars a year now will be the cap that closes what they used to call the donut hole that's a huge deal and then we've also lowered health insurance premiums for everybody on aca receiving what's called premium support those are really important ways and here's something else the social security benefit is going up and the medicare premium is coming down that's what we're doing to help seniors with rising costs. Um, but there's more to do, and we've got, we can't stop until we get these uh, prices under control. It's not going to be a surprise to you to know that people in your district are also concerned about crime and about bail reform. And in the past, you have supported um, loosening the bail reform laws and ending mass incarceration. Do you still think it's a good idea? What I think is a good idea is that a, a, a poor guy shouldn't be in jail when a rich one gets out. So if you're a hedge fund manager who kills his family, like that guy in Connecticut a couple years ago, you're home waiting trial when the, when the poor kid's sitting in jail. But dangerous people need to stay off our streets. And so what I said from the get-go is, is don't let dangerous people out. So you can have a system that treats poor people and rich people the same, especially before trial, right? We're talking about before your trial. Um, somebody shouldn't be sitting in jail for years and years who's not dangerous just because they're poor. That's the good part of reform. What Albany screwed up was is we're letting out too many dangerous people. So what should Albany do? Well, Albany should fix it. Um, all, you know, Albany should fix it. And the way to fix it is to simply... But members of your party don't want to fix it. Well, well, you should, you should ask them. Uh, why not? What, what I'm telling is my position. And, and, and let's bear in mind, I, I work in Washington. So where, where my opponent picks up a paycheck or claims to is in Albany. Maybe he should do some work on this because they screwed it up. And what they ought to do is bring some common sense back to it so that we keep dangerous people behind bars. Now, let's also bear in mind before we get too carried away... Uh, crime in the Hudson Valley is lower today than it was just four years ago. But we do have to support our police. We have to fund good policing, which is why I brought millions back to the district to do that. And we just passed the most important funding bill for local police departments in a long time through the House called the Invest to Protect Act. So we need to support our police. We could also get guns off our streets, by the way. And my opponent will do nothing about gun violence. And is he, you know, one of these NRA guys that won't, won't, won't ban assault weapons. He voted against you know, raising the age to have teenagers buy AR-15s. We can get gun violence under control as well. That would help with crime. So we only have a short time left. I'm wondering, do you think President Biden should be the nominee of your party running for re-election in the next presidential election? Sure. I think the president has a, a record of, of, uh, of, of delivering results, and we have got to keep going. There is, there is a lot more to do. If you look around the world, the United States... Uh, is the strongest, best positioned country coming out of the pandemic, but we are not satisfied with where we are. But his poll numbers are really not good. Yeah, well, polls go up and polls go down. But let's look at the record. We've invested in our roads and our bridges for the first time in years. We're keeping seniors costs by capping prescription drug costs and taking on the big drug companies. Pass gun safety legislation. The Chips and Science Act, we just announced $120 billion of private sector investments, tens of thousands of new jobs. That's in central New York, Hudson Valley. Uh, we've been waiting generations for that to happen. I'm about the results, and we need to keep getting them. Okay, Congressman, that's all the time we have. Up next, Assemblyman Mike Lawler, who's a noted Albany brawler.